I think we are live. Uh, welcome to my desktop, everybody. What's going on? Uh, it's going to be a good show, special show. Uh, today we're going to edit photos. Uh, we're going to do a little um, Lightroom workflow type stuff. Uh, one common question I get is when you travel, how do you come back and recombine your libraries into one library to rule them all? So we're going to do a little bit of that. All right, sometimes workflow is boring. I want to make it exciting. All right. Uh, normally during this time, by the way, what we do is we go over the most recent episode that's come out of Becoming an Artist. Uh, bloop! We just uh, blasted out there with episode 13, uh, which should be there for you now. Um, by the way, these little desktop shows, they're pretty popular. I didn't think they were that popular, but check it out. Last show we did a few days ago has already reached almost a quarter million people. Look at that. Changing lives right and left. Um, yeah, actually, this show is all about um, kind of helping you unlock your creative self inside. Um, it took me a long time to figure out how to like create uh, myself, right? And to be creative and kind of get back to that natural childlike state. Um, in fact, I'm still learning. You know, I still make a lot of mistakes, doing my best. Um, so we go through all these topics and a lot of like soft topics in between the art, right? That's kind of where the the real breakthroughs are. Um, all right, let me check the stream and make sure this is actually um, actually live and going. What's going on here, Facebook? Let me refresh. So you never know. Sometimes you start this Wirecast stream and things go haywire. Sometimes they go haywire. By the way, we're about to open a new shop here on Facebook, uh, so stay tuned. I'm going to try to get that up this week. Try to get that up this week. Um, oh, here we go. We're live. You guys are watching. Let us know where you're watching from. Hey, Susan, we're working on the Windows one right now, I promise. Hello, Bill Warner from Houston, Texas. How are you? Matthew, excited for this video. Um, hey, Jack from Lincoln, Nebraska. Awesome to see, see you. That's a great freeze frame there, isn't it? Fantastic. What a great, what a great freeze frame. I mean, it, it's impossible for Facebook to choose a, a worse freeze frame for me on all these videos. I always have to go through and upload something later. All right. All right, so let's get going here. Um, let's start with editing some photos. Yo, let's do that. Um, we're going to edit two photos in Aurora HDR Pro first, and then um, and then uh, see what happens from there. Okay, boop. Okay, so these are a couple photos I thought would be fun to edit. Okay, this is from the ceiling of the Paris Opera House. One, two, three. E R San. Uno, dos, tres. Use a little Mexican Spanish lingo there for you. Um, and then we're going to work on these. Okay, this is um, near the Meraki boulders here in New Zealand. By the way, to get this kind of a shot, here's a hot trick. It's really hard to shoot the ceiling, right? It's very hard because you get that weird neck position. I call it, uh, you know, crouching, crouching tiger hidden camera. And uh, the best thing to do is usually in these kind of places, right, these very ornate Baroque places, they have very richly decorated uh, ceilings, but they also have richly decorated floors, and everything's very symmetrical, like they're really into that. So just find the symmetrical spot right in the middle that the architects have already told you exactly where it is, and just set your camera down there on the floor. Make sure it's, you know, orthogonal or whatever, and then put it on timer, and then just back away and hit go. All right, that's how I got this shot. So let's combine these three things into, uh, into one. Okay, we're going to use Aurora HDR Pro down here. Okay. Boop. Come on. Load, load like the wind, Aurora. Um, I don't really have to do alignment because I'm sure they're all steady. I'm not going to do any ghost uh, reduction because there were no ghosts. So I'll just say create HDR. Okay. Now fly. Fly like the wind, Aurora. While that's going on, let me show you this. Let me show you something a little self-serving. If you don't mind. Uh, here's our store. We're about to release a brand new store, by the way. As soon as Curtis and Yonatus get their act together. I don't know how long I've been asking for this new store, but it is slow and coming. But in the meantime, the old store works fine, right? It's a little clunky, but it works. You get very few complaints. Um, anyway, this is Aurora HDR Pro. Get it, yo. It's really neat. Super awesome. And there's another one you can get with a, um, it comes with my tutorial, right? My HDR tutorial with a special video all around um, Aurora. All right, it must be loaded by now. Yes, 
Yes, here we are. Look at that. That looks pretty cool. So we have all these presets down here. I always like this one. This one is called um, Chocolate Increases Happiness and Shame, which is true. Look at that. See how glowy, glowy it is? Look at that. This one's really ornate. This one is called Crisco Twister with Ante. Anyway, I hope you guys are enjoying um, episode 13. It's not nearly as good as episode 9 of Game of Thrones, I'll be honest. All right? We didn't have budget for dragons. Um, you don't get to see uh, Daenerys in the nude. Uh, this is a family show. This is a family show here. I'm sorry about that. I like this one. Socks of black go the distance. Okay, let's start with that one and, uh, and go from there. Okay. So I'm going to add another layer here. And I'm going to really, this is going to be the super HDR layer. Okay. One of the keys, I think, with doing anything uh, photographic is to have some kind of transition, either warm to cool or untextured to textured. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. So here I'm going to go hardcore HDR, all right? Really increase the HDR look, um, the boost, do a little detail, oh yeah. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the, um, the paint brush here, whoop, and then just kind of paint right in the middle, okay? So it'll be kind of less HDRE, which is not a word, on the outside and more HDRE on the inside. So if I click on my little mask here, you can see that I just kind of made it like that in the middle, okay? Now let's darken those corners, because I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a few people over here. They're all warped and everything. This is a, <coughs> this is a fisheye lens, obviously. So let's just darken the corners, okay? Um, so I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to call this a Vinny or Vignette, all right? That's what I call. I have little nicknames for all my tools, okay? It kind of it shows that I love them. You know, I think when you come up with a nickname for someone, it indicates a certain level of love. All right, so let's let's uh, let's darken Vinny here. Look at that, and plus it makes the 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 whole thing look kind of nice, doesn't it? Let's add a little bit of inner light, so it glows even more. So we can look at a before and after. If you click on this little orange thing right here, before and after. By the way, you don't just have to use Aurora HDR just for HDR shots. You can use it for any kind of shot, right? Okay, now let's add a little bit of glow, okay, sort of go here to image radiance, amp this up, smart colorize, we'll cool it off a little bit too, rather than have everything be so, so warm, okay. Alright, so I'm just going to splash this in a little bit here, a little bit here, just play with it, you know. I don't ever really, like maybe on like my magnum opus pieces, I go into 100%. But often, you know, if it looks good from far away, that's really what, what you want, right? If you think about Impressionist paintings or whatever, they paint them as if they're going to be viewed from far away. Because when you get up close, they don't really make much sense, right? So I kind of paint everything like it's very, very far away. All right, I like that. I like it a lot. Let me go and export this to an image. Let me put it in uh, processing. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, trays workspace. Or a me, we'll just dump it in there so we can look at the before and after. Okay. Okay, that's gonna process for a second. Okay, so while that's processing, let me see where people are from. Um, if you're just tuning in, uh, let me know where you're watching from. We're editing photos, we're gonna do some workflow stuff, all that jazz. Okay. Um, all right, looks like there is a, a drinking game that, that's been established by uh, Gino. If Blueberry shows up, I wish she won't. I'm out in my office to get a shot. If I cough, which I'm getting over, over my cough, <laughs> when I stroke my beard and tell a story, it's too obvious, that's right. Lightroom freezes up, it's possible. Um, Scarlet will not show up. None of the kids will show up because they're off at school. Ruby says no one would, uh, <laughs> no one would survive this. It's true, it's true. Um, so what's going on here, people? Matthew McCarty asks, is there any way to retouch a lower layer while keeping the upper layers active? No, there is not. And actually, I brought this up with the Mac Fun team during testing because I really wanted to do that. But the way the engine works won't allow that. Right? Very good. Mike will kiss me when I get this on Windows. We're trying as hard as we can. Look, we know 80% of the market is on Windows. And I don't know if you saw the stats, but we've already had over a quarter million downloads. And that's just on Mac. 
can you imagine when it comes to to Windows, it's going to be four times that. So it'll be a million in the first few few months. It'll be very exciting. Hey, Amanda from Jacksonville, what's going on? What is up? What's up, Jacksonville? Uh, Ronald Duggar says, would Aurora HDR work for JPEG scans from 1963? Absolutely. Um, you know, I don't show this enough, but you can drag any old photo in there. It doesn't even have to be HDR-ish, and you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. You know? Hey, hey, Nassim from Algeria. You like the beard. Thank you. You know, whenever I travel in the Middle East, uh, you know, everyone's got the beard on over there. And it's very impressive. In fact, I'm pretty sure uh, I was on this Emirates flight, and I had this um, uh, male flight attendant, okay? And I'm pretty sure, like, when we started the flight, he was cleanly shaven, and by the end of the flight, he had this full beard. It's amazing. I mean, incredible. All right, let's edit one more photo, yo. Oh, wait, let's look at it before and after that one. Um, it's still processing, I think. Yep, still processing. Processing. So the next one we're going to edit, I'm going to show you a little trick on this one. A trick that I found out by accident, okay? I did not have a priori knowledge that this was a trick that I was going to engage in. So I've got three photos here. Let's organize them from brightest to darkest, okay? So we have this one, a, du, toi, okay? And as you can see, these are all really bright. Um, I should have taken them a little bit darker. At least one of these exposures should have been a little bit darker. Um, but Aurora can pull a phoenix from the ashes. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I can see the crowd is getting worried, like, oh, how is he going to save the photo? Don't worry. I'll save it. Always, always trust. Okay. I'll take care of this thing. I'll take care of this thing. By the way, you guys should come join our group. We've got a really awesome group. It's right here. Um, it's called Becoming an Artist Group. Right there, Becoming an Artist. Boom. Uh, we just started. already has about 3,200 members. Awesome possum. Um, there's all kinds of great stuff in here. That's a nice shot, Paul. I like that. Um, come in here and make some friends. Um, that's a nice photo, Susan Fields. That's a cool way to spell Susan. Look at that. That's my mom's name. Amanda, that's a nice photo. Looking good. Yeah, scroll through here. You'll get all kinds of ideas. I was scrolling through here this morning, and I was blown away at a few shots. Look at that one. That's sweet. Look at that. Really nice. Not sure about that um, watermark there, bro. But the photo is nice. The photo is nice. It's a nice looking photo, Ludwig. I like these names where they have like little dots over there, over the vowels. There's a shot from Olivia. Look at that. Um, I took her profile photo. We did that at um, at Boom Rock. I'm waiting for it to get big. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, all kinds of inspiration in here. Come check it out. Check it out. Okay, so now we can look at a before and after. Let's put these side by side. Okay, so this is the before. All right, this is the middle exposure, at least of the before. And then the after, it really just pops and glows and like is opera Parisian majestic as it actually was in person. All right, let's work on the next photo. Let's make sure we're still broadcasting, by the way. I felt a disturbance in the force, like something might not be working. Well, I guess it's working all right. Hey, Ken Waller. From Auckland, a week off work, doing some photography, awesome. Uh, hey, Johnson from Lafayette, Louisiana. Whoop. Thanks, Mike Williams. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go solo. So we're going to work on one more photo, and then we're going to do some Lightroom workflow fun, okay? In fact, it's so fun, we're going to spell it with a PH, like Mac fun. Here we go. Here we go. Let me go here. Boom. Let me go ahead and tell you the secret ahead of time is that the first time I edited this, I brought in the super bright version and it really kind of messed up the result. So now I'm just gonna bring in just these two exposures. All right, I'm gonna bring them into um, Aurora. Okay, don't save, I already exported it. Mm, no, I don't need to do anything, I'll just say create HDR. Yeah, so what happened the first time I tested this is <coughs> I brought in all three exposures and I just couldn't recover some of those highlights in Aurora. All right. Um, and I also tested it with Photomatic, and it's the same problem. So that's one reason I've stopped shooting like really, really bright exposures during the daytime because it's just it's too bright. It's too much information, really, uh, at least for me. Um, so now look how fast Aurora is. Look at that. 
we would be about 10% of the way if we were using Lightroom, you know? You know, by the way, we made a bunch of new um, videos lately for, uh, for Aurora. Let's click on some of these to see how they look. This one is called Girls Love Them Some Jon Snow. True, don't they? Girls love Jon Snow. I've never seen someone so universally loved by the ladies. To me, he always looks confused. He always looks like he's not sure what's going on. Yeah, he's a sensitive male and all that stuff. I get it. I get it. But I'm just saying he looks like a confused, sensitive male. Which is fine. Uh, this looks pretty good. This one is called The Safety Word Was Bearded Riker. Um, season 2 and beyond. I'm in my Season 2 now, by the way. Uh, that does look pretty cool. It's a little too glowy. A little too glowy glow. By the way, these, these presets are just ideas, right? They're just things to get you thinking. You don't have to stick with them. This is our new preset package for Aurora we just released, by the way. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. Super awesome. Uh, so since this one is too glowy, you can reduce the glowiness here in image radiance and just kind of pop that down to a more respectable level, okay? Looks like there's a little bit of vignetting going on. See, it's a little too... This is something else I don't like in HDR photos. I used to do it all the time, now I do it less. Is whenever you have the sun, to have like a really dark gray kind of stormy area. That's too contrasty, right? They don't really... They're strange bedfellows, those two. So try not to do that. So let's see if there's some vignetting going on here or something. Look at all these panels down here. There is. Let's take off some of that vignetting and open up those uh, open up those corners a little bit. Cool. Now let's add a new layer and let's let's texture up the clouds a little bit. We're going to make the clouds a little bit more HDRE. Again, not an officially supported word by Trey Ratcliffe or Mac Fun. So we're going to increase the HDR look. We'll soften it. A little boosty boost. Grab our brush and just brush into the sky. You might be able to see I've got some sensor dust there, which unfortunately Aurora doesn't get rid of. So I'll have to open up Photoshop for that. Now I'll show you a trick I like to do for the water. Okay, So I'm going to add another layer here. By the way, if you want to see what I just painted there, let me click on the mask. You can see I just painted into the sky, right? Each stroke is about 50%. And now we're going to make the water very nice. Okay, So we'll go down here to Image Radiance. You guys know I love this area. Image Radiance right here. So we'll do that. Um, we'll do a little bit of smoothness. We're going to brighten it a little bit and colorize it a little bit. Okay, look at that. Oh yeah. So and then we'll just kind of paint that in down below because it makes the water even more glowy and more nice. Okay, let's turn that on so we can see the effect. Look at that. Oh yeah, so that's um, before the glow and after the glow. It's nice. Actually, it's a little much, isn't it? So if you find you did a little too much, you can always go down here and pick the opacity. I can dial back the intensity of that individual layer. Like that. That looks good. Looking good. All right, let's so go and export this one to the same place. Save. Okay. Now we're going to have a little Lightroom fun. All right, a little Lightroom fun. All right, let's go over and check the uh, peanut gallery, see how you guys are doing. By the way, thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, this is great fun. Um, Mike, I find the ladies like Norman Reedus. Who the heck is that? Like, I'm going to look up this guy. Who's Norman Reedus? I'm usually good with popular cult cultural references. Who is Norman Reedus? This guy. Who is this guy? Am I going to, am I going to be sad that I Googled this guy? He's an actor. Now that guy. They do like that guy, don't they? They love the Norman Reedus. He looks the same, doesn't he? <laughs> He's got that haunting stare. The haunting stare that can turn a man dead or undead. Um, okay, here we go. Lightroom fun. Lightroom fun. Um, okay, this is my main library. Okay. By the way, check out this image. This is a crazy place. I've never seen any place like this. This is um, here at the Ernslaw Burn. Okay, uh, these are all glaciers up here. We had to take a helicopter up here to give you a sense of scale. This reminds me I should do this more with my photos. Is right down here. Let's zoom in. That is Curtis. 
You see that right there? That's Curtis. All right, so let's zoom out here and zoom all the way out. And you can see he's that little dot right there. So you can imagine how, I've never seen striations quite like this. It's unbelievable. It's a cool place. I'm going to go back here when there's uh, better light. I didn't really like the light here. Okay. This is just a study, by the way, of a photo that I really I eventually want to take. Okay. All right, so anyway, enough about that. We're not here to talk about photo. We're stopped. Photo discussion is over. Now we're talking about workflow. And um, by the way, if I can give another plug to one of our great products. <laughs> It's actually one is very good, I must say. Um, we've got this thing called um, Organize Your Photos. We put an explanation point at the end to, to make a point of it. So it's here under Photography Tutorials. Um, it goes through the whole process, and it's very simple. We say there's a, a three-level system. And uh, what happens in the three-level system is uh, there's, a, there's a very simple, here we go, Lightroom video tutorial right there. Actually, we've got a few of them. Just get them all. Um, it's a three-level system. One is just like for beginners that aren't really sure what to do. Uh, two is for intermediate, and three is hardcore. That's what I do. So we're going to hardcore here today. So of course, the problem is, let's begin with the overall problem of workflow, in that photographers, like once you reach a somewhat serious level, or even amateur level, you end up with too many photos to fit on your computer, okay? So you have to use an external drive, right? And so this takes a bit of a mind shift, all right? You can see this is all on my main drive right now. I've got <coughs> 435,000 photos, okay? A lot of photos. If you open this up, you can see how it's spread out over multiple years, okay? All the way back to 2006. Now here we are in 2016 already, okay? Already. So this is on a huge drive. It's on a Promise Pegasus drive. I think it's like an 18 terabyte drive. It's enormous. It's big. It plugs in. I'm not going to carry this around when I travel. So what do I do? Okay, well, when I travel, I have a... Let's go in here. Okay, I've got this area called Trays Workspace. Ah, Lightroom Laptop Catalogs. Okay. I've got this one catalog here called Prime, okay? It's basically an empty catalog. All right, let me open it up, okay? So this is how I start every trip, okay? I've got this Prime um, catalog that's just totally empty, all right? It has all of my um, smart collections in there, all this kind of stuff. I'll go through this a little bit quickly today. I don't want to bother you, but you can see it's a totally empty directory or empty system. So let me close this up. So what I'll do is I'll kind of I'll right click this and I'll duplicate it and I will give it a name, okay, based on where I'm going. You can see now I'm about to import two different um, libraries from recent travels. Um, one of them is when I was on the North Island. Okay, I was on the North Island on and off for about two weeks in different locations. And so I have a special catalog file for that. And then all the I have all the photos inside of there. Okay. And then I just got back from four days in Australia, a whirlwind four days, and um, I made a special catalog just for that. Okay, so now we're going to import those into the mother load. Okay, how do we do that? How do I do that? Let me show you. So I've already taken them off of my local computer, my local laptop here, my local laptop, and I have moved them over to that big Pegasus drive. Okay, so they're just sitting there right now. Let's go see. Where are they? They are inside incoming. All right. So I've got these two things now called incoming. Okay. North Island and Aussie Land. Okay. So we'll go here to North Island. And I am going to cl double click on this one to open the, up this catalog. Okay. What I want to do is make sure this catalog is pointing to the right photos. Okay. Because currently it is pointing to my hard drive, which I don't want it to do. Okay, just checking my messages here. Checking my messages. I've got a shipment. I've got a shipment. Exciting. Um, okay, so this is all the North Island stuff. Okay, um, went many places. Boom Rock. We had a cool flight with Helitrans. We went to Hobbiton. 
went to Taupo, to Hookah Lodge, had an incredible time there, to Waiheke Island. Um, by the way, I, I love this photo. I may never publish it. I don't know if it'll be popular. I don't try to publish photos that are popular, but I think this photo is very interesting. Again, we're not here to talk about photos. I get distracted by photos. We're here to talk about workflow. Bad tray. Went to Wellington. We also went to Furry Coho. Um, that was a great place too, yo. Okay, anyway, so we've got these images from the North Island. We want to integrate these into the mother load. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. We are going to make sure that this 2016 is pointing to the right place. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to say update folder location because currently it's pointing to my hard drive. All right. I don't want it to point to my hard drive. I want it to point to that incoming directory. Okay. So I'll go here, my Lightroom photos, 2016, boom. Uh oh. Rut row. See, I've already screwed it up. I've already screwed it up. Ratcliffe. Well, it's good. It's good. Actually, I do know what happened. I do know what happened. Now you guys can watch. Watch and learn. I will also watch and learn. Okay, let's let's do this. I don't have my photos in the correct location yet. Right? Right? Bush League, Ratcliffe, Bush League. So uh, all my pictures are here in 2016. So I need to copy this and boop. I'm just going to drop it over here inside incoming. Okay. Let that copy for a second. Here we go and yo. 2016, move it there. Drop it like it's hot. What's going on? Oh, no. No, hold on. It got confused because I was in that dialogue. Look, I'm just confusing myself now. Confusing stuff, I tell you. I, I have uh, sympathy for people that, um, that have trouble with it. Okay, here we go. Obviously, I'm having trouble with it. All right, 2016, I'm going to copy it over here. There we go. Can I let it copy for a second? So what, what's been happening is whenever I start up a new, um, a new place or a new catalog, is it's been putting all my photos in the exact same place, which is fine. Um, had I been more um, erstwhile and careful and focused, I would have made a separate directory structure for each of those um, library trees. Okay, But it doesn't matter. Um, I just want to make sure that everything gets over to that drive, okay, over to my extra drive. Let's go check comments, see what's going on out there while that's copying. It should only take three minutes. Three minutes. Ready for three minutes of amazing banter? Um, it might be the jet lag. Could be. Should I also have separate TIFF edit and JPEG edit? You could if you want to. Um, I don't. I just have the raw file and then I have the final JPEG. Hello from Bogota, Colombia. Nice of you to say. Nice of you to say. Let's look at a few uh, of my favorite images from the trip, shall we? Shall we? Oh, by the way, let's look at the before and after. Okay. So let's take the middle exposure. Uh, this is the before and that's the after. Cool, huh? Except for all those little spots. Ignore that. Oh. I'll use this as an opportunity to show you the coolest new feature in Photoshop. I don't know if you guys are Photoshop nerds like me, uh, but they just released a new Photoshop. And there's always these, <coughs> they always throw in all these random features that I would never use. But there's one really cool feature. So let me pop a few of these spots because they're really annoying me. Click this tool, Content Aware. I find this to be sort of a therapeutic exercise to go pop these little spots. Pop them, pop them like they're hot. Pop them. Look at that. That's not a new feature, by the way. That's an old feature. I wish Lightroom had that, and I also wish Aurora had that. I was trying to talk our team into doing that, but I can't quite get them to twist off on it. So you can see here that my horizon is a little off, right? A little off. So let's correct the horizon. And here's the new thing with, um, with Photoshop. See, there's this new thing here called Content Aware. Okay, Have that thing checked and watch what happens. Well, first, let me show you what used to happen. If it's not on, 
what used to happen is when you would try to uh, correct the horizon, you end up losing a bunch of triangles. See, you lose that triangle, you just lose stuff, right? But now with content aware, what happens is, let me escape and redo it. With content aware checked on, when you twist it, you can see that we've got like white area up here, right? We've got actually white areas down here. You've got four white triangles. So when I hit enter, what will happen is we'll programmatically fill in that area with more sky, more dock, more beach, more boat. Um, it's pretty nifty, which means that you don't have to lose real estate anymore when you crop things. I used to have a much more manual way of doing that, but I think that's pretty cool. All right, Finder, you done? Less than a minute. It's getting dramatic. It's getting dramatic. All right, let me send a, a gentle reminder, everyone out there. Minnesota, I do want to come to Minnesota, Melinda. I would enjoy that. Um, here's the gentle reminder, you guys. Come join the Becoming an Artist group. Okay. Gosh, email, slow down for a second. Um, slow down email. Um, come join this group. Share your photos. Share your thoughts. Okay, we're all in this together. Okay, now, all that stuff has been moved over. Okay, now, Naya, Naya. I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say um, update folder location. Now I will tell it it is in a terabyte for your thoughts um, incoming 2016. Okay, choose. Okay, now it should find everything. No problem. Okay, it's all under 2016. Cool. Good. Okay, that one's done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close it. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to, I'm going to open the great library. Okay, this is my main library. And now we're going to import that one. Okay, now that that library knows the correct location of all the photos. Okay, so we will go to File, Import from another catalog. You see this one? Import from another catalog. Boom. Okay, see that amazing recovery? See how I made a mistake and recovered? Believe me, I still make mistakes. Um, it's, it, it's a weird thing to think about libraries in multiple locations, so I almost have to go through the whole process myself again every time. But like I said, it's in that tutorial, if you don't follow this. Um, okay, which one am I going to import? This one, okay? That's the one we were just inside. So I will say choose. All right. Oh, there's a photo of me. Uh, taking a selfie in front of a sign that says, no selfie. That was at the Vatican. Here's my friend Renee getting out of a car in extreme wind, wind conditions. These are very dumb photos. So they're not typical of the kind of photos I, I have in here. Okay, so here's the big decision, okay? What do I want to do? Do I want to copy the photos or do I want to add them without moving? Okay, they're already on the same drive as all the other photos, so I, I don't want to I don't want to copy them because that will just make a copy. And traditionally I've tried this and it's incredibly slow. I find Finder to be like a hundred times faster. I don't know why it's so slow. So that's why I move them over manually. Um, and then I say add. Okay, so I'm gonna say add right there. And then I'm gonna say import. Okay. So you watch this is incredibly fast, how fast it does this. This is a couple thousand photos thousand photos, a lot of incoming email. Yes. Right, slow down people, slow down. Um, good, so we just imported, oh not that many photos, 450, okay. But you'll see um, doo -doo -doo, that now we have all the photos are integrated right into here. Um, these are all the photos from that trip, okay. Um, if I go to previous import right here, oh, oh no, this, that doesn't count as an import, right? That counts as uh, something else. You see? You see? Right on. Okay. So that's basically how you do it. Does that make sense? That makes sense to everybody. Um, let's do it. Well, I'm not going to waste your time by doing it with the other one, uh, but you get the idea, I think. All right. All right. I've got so many photos to edit, it's ridiculous. Oh, it's a good problem, I guess. Um, you can see these are ones that I want to work on that I haven't had time to work on yet. 91,000 that I want to work on. Um, maybe I'll work on a few of them today. 
never know. You never know, okay? All right, you guys, I will end the broadcast now. Um, I hope that made a little bit of sense. It made a little sense. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Um, I'm going to uh, bail out on the broadcast now. Um, thank you, my internet friends. Um, I will see you soon uh, for the next broadcast. Um, you guys stay awesome. Let me know how many questions you have or what your questions are. I will uh, I'll go through there and try to answer as best I can. All right, you guys stay awesome, and I'll see you next time. Oh, where's my Wirecast? It's always an awkward ending with Wirecast. So I got to go in here and click end stream. And, you know, this this is a very confusing interface, by the way. Okay, end stream. Mm -hmm.